on the Word this morning. Thank you, Pastor Johanna. Thank you, church. If you could be seated today. Awesome. So, so good. Wow. Well, it's great to be with you all this morning, church. And uh, I wanna welcome everybody online today as well. If you're with us, no matter what platform you're on or wherever you are, hey, just be on the chat as well. Say hello to each other. Uh, be on there and uh, contribute to each other, which is awesome. So it's great to have you with us online as well. But uh, can, I, can I just say, I love the fact that that Christmas appeal happened this week. Uh, I just love it. I love that um, 24 families. Can I say that we've done Christmas appeals in the past, but this is the biggest one we've ever done. And, uh, and it's only going to grow into the future as well. But what an opportunity we have to show the love of Jesus, to, to be generous in this season. And, uh, and I, I just honour everyone in the life of the church. And I hope that it's an inspiration to all of us to go, okay, what can God do through our lives as well in this season? But as a church, I just know, uh, you know, over this season, it is one thing that we want to really celebrate is who Jesus is and the love and hope and life that He brings to the world around us. Do you believe that today? You believe it today. This is a great opportunity where we can show Jesus to the world around us. And that's really what I wanna uh, preach about this morning and talk about today as we launch into this series called Hope of the World. And uh, who loves Christmas? Do you love Christmas? Oh, man, I love Christmas. I love Christmas time. I love the time with family. I love all the food and the gathering, the connection together. It is an, a fun, amazing time of the year. And, uh, and you know, our, our family was so keen. I think our Christmas tree went up in October in our house. I mean, honestly, I like Christmas, but I mean, there's, there's too soon. It, it was just too soon. It was like the, the kids were like, Dad, my kids were saying, Dad, you're the Grinch. You don't want to put the Christmas tree up. I said, I'm not the Grinch. I'm just, I just, you know, it's too soon. I mean, like, let's do it at November. It's fine. And our Christmas tree went up. And I'm so glad it did. I'm so glad it did. They, the kids were putting lights up everywhere. And uh, I mean, they tried to put lights out on our hedge that I had built out the front. And, you know, that didn't work out real well at all, uh, which was great. I mean, they were running the light stream across where the cars would drive out. This is, this is not going to work, guys. I'm sorry. But, you know, it's, it's just great when you have the family that, that, you know, can say, hey, we want to enjoy what Christmas means. And, you know, Christmas needs to really come around who Jesus is. He is the reason for the season. He is the hope of the world. And, you know, our heart as a church over this December is really to bring Him to the forefront is really to show the revelation of who Jesus is. And that is why next Sunday is so important for our church. That's why really seeing people come, inviting friends and family to come, taking flyers out, doing a fly drop in your community as well, you know, sharing it on your social medias to let people know, hey, what an opportunity to come and hear the gospel message of who Jesus is in a fresh way in this Christmas season. And I just love what God's gonna do over this time. Hey, why don't you open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter one, verses 18 to 24. It says this, it says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to, mar to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her has conceived, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the, his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophets, through the prophet, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary as his wife. I love this passage of Scripture. My first key today is this, is save the people. Save the people. 
Now you can read into this message right now and most of us know the story of Christmas and they know the story of what you know, Mary has go, is going through in this season and what Joseph is going through in this season. But you can imagine the day that Joseph realised that his wife was pregnant and he wasn't the father. How many know that's not a great day? That's not a great moment in Joseph's life when he realised that, hey, my wife is pregnant and I am not the dad. All right, this is a huge interruption to his life, to his plans, to her plans as well as his fiance. I mean, you can imagine the emotions that he's going through, but I love what this shows. It says this, Joseph was a good man. Joseph was a good man. See, Joseph had a, had a decision he had to make on how he was gonna deal with this situation. Because culturally in that time, it, it meant that if your wife was unfaithful to you, if there was adultery, that she, she could be taken out in the street and stoned publicly and, uh, and, and, and her life be taken from her because of what had happened. Now see, Joseph was a good man though. I mean, no, God knows how to choose the right people. He knows how to pick the right people for destiny, for the purposes that he has to bring into the world and into the earth. And Joseph, made, he, he had a decision. He thought, you know what? I don't want that for, for my fiance. I love Mary. Even though he's dealing with a lot of emotions in his life, he says, I don't want that for Mary. I'm gonna put her away quietly and I'll, I'll divorce her later on, but I, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want this to happen to her. So he, he makes a decision and, and, and God is just perfect in His timing. God's perfect in His timing for people. And, and He comes that night and gives Him a dream. And the angel meets and visits Him in this dream and lets Him know these words in verse 21. And she will have a son and you are to name Him Jesus for He will save His people from their sins. He will save His people from, them, from their sins. See, I know that for Joseph in this dream, he is, he is, you know, contemplating what this means. Because the name Jesus, you know, it, it actually means in Hebrew, it means Jehovah saves. Jehovah saves. It's another way of saying the word Joshua, which means the same thing. Jehovah saves. And so for, for, for Joseph getting this dream, understanding, wow, this baby, this son, this child is going to be the anointed one is going to be the Messiah, the Christ. And He's gonna be, He's gonna have the name just like Joshua. See all the thoughts that would be going through Joseph's mind and understand, wow, Joshua, he was a great military commander. He, he, he rousted 31 kingdoms. He brought Israel into the promised land. This is incredible. This is amazing what, who, who, who Joseph was. I mean, this, uh, can you imagine what they were going through? See, Israel, they were in, in, under captivity by the Romans. They were being held and they were in a place of tyranny. They were in a place where they needed liberty. And see, for Joseph, he knew that right throughout history, all through when you read Judges, when you read First and Second Samuel, when you read First uh, and Second Kings, you can see that God, every time when He liberated the people of Israel, He always saved them from the oppressor. He always delivered Israel from the oppressor. So for Joseph, he's in this moment thinking, oh, finally, finally, you're gonna come and deliver us from these Romans. You're gonna come and, and get rid of these Romans. Your kingdom is coming. You will bring Israel back to its, 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 its glory again and back to the state you want it. He's gonna be the king. This is incredible. This is everything we've hoped for. See, Jewish people, they would grow up waiting for the Messiah, waiting for the Christ, waiting for, yes, a Joshua to come and liberate them from the captivity that they were under. But how many know that's not what the angel said? How many know he, he didn't say He will save the people from the Romans? But He said something different. He said He will save the people from their sins. And this is pretty incredible when you think about it. Because this was new. This was not something that Joseph had heard of or even thought of before. 
to save the people from their sins was so different because it meant that this was going beyond the needs that Joseph had for his own life and his own family and his own generation. This was going beyond him. This was about something bigger, something far more greater and more generational and more eternal than his moment right then and there. And Joseph had some decisions to make in himself in thinking, Lord, He will save the people from their sins. This is not what we thought was going to happen because Joseph knew in himself, you know what? That's not something that was high on the priority list because they knew, hey, there's a really great temple. There's a, there's, it's up there on the hill in Jerusalem. And if we sin, we can go and we can make sacrifices to God and that, that sacrifice will, it will cover us for our sins. It will cover us for our sins. We've got a perfectly good system in place. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't amazing. We've got a good system. All right, it's happening. It's working. And it's not high on the priority list. It's not high on the needs list. You can imagine this in himself, these wrestles that are going on that, oh, save the people from their sins. Hey, we've already got something in place for that. But for, for God to send the angel to say, hey, this is more important than you, Joseph. This is bigger than you. This is beyond you and it's beyond your generation. And so for Joseph making these decisions, these wrestles in himself and being able to look at this situation and say, hey, Lord, I wanna be able to be a part of something bigger than just myself. I wanna be a part of something that you're doing that's beyond me and Mary that's beyond my family and that's beyond my nation right now? How do I tap into what you're doing that's bigger than me? How many know sometimes in our lives we make choices for, for, for moments that are bigger than just us, that are bigger than just our generation and just our moment? And this was one of those moments where Joseph was saying, God, I choose you. I choose you. I choose to say yes to what you're doing in this moment. I choose to say yes, even though in my heart of hearts, I would love for you to liberate Israel from the Romans. I would love to be free of this tyranny. I would love for you to do what you've done in the past. But if this is bigger than me, if this is bigger than our understanding, then God, we wanna say yes to you. We wanna say yes to you. This leads me to my second key today is embracing Jesus embracing Jesus. And I love this, when Joseph woke up, this is what it says, Matthew 1, When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. How many of you know that was a pivotal moment in Joseph's life? Because before he went to sleep, he was gonna divorce Mary. But when he woke up, he was ready to marry Mary. All right, just in one moment, just in one dream, in one night's sleep, he changed his mind completely. He had a heart shift and a heart change because God met him in that moment. And when he woke up, he said, yes, Lord, I choose to embrace Jesus. I choose to embrace your plan. I choose to embrace your will that is beyond me. I say yes to Jesus. How many know this was a life commitment? This wasn't just a, this wasn't just a kind of like, will I eat weak beasts this morning? Will I have cornflakes? I mean, no, they're really easy decisions. Sometimes my children can struggle with it. All right, it could take a little while before they choose what they're gonna have for breakfast that day. All right, but, but you know, I, I just love that for, for Joseph, he knew he was taking on something more than just a small decision. It was one of the biggest his life would ever make. To say yes, and embrace Jesus, a commitment for life. See, it was a commitment in his life that said, God, I, I, I just, I don't even know how to do this, but I'm gonna say yes to the first step that's in front of me, and that's to get married to Mary. That's to say, yes, here's the first step in front of me. Whenever God calls us to do something that we don't understand, you just take one step at a time. You take the first step that's in front of you. And that's what Joseph did. He took the first step in front of him. He said, I will not divorce her. I will say yes. I will marry Mary and all that comes with that. Everything that comes with it. How many know there was no manual that was written on how to raise the Son of God? There's no manual. There was no, there's no kind of like, okay, here's the 10 steps to raising the Son of God. Number one. There are no steps. 
<laughs> Learn as you go. See, for him, he didn't know what to do, but he took on the thing. And I just love that even for, for, for Joseph, even at the age of 12, when Jesus, you know, was a, was a young boy, I can imagine this, when Jesus gets lost and stays in the temple for three days and Joseph and Mary are on their journey and then they suddenly realise Jesus is missing. Can you imagine that prayer from Joseph? I just, I think about this. This is the things I think about sometimes. It's like, imagine Joseph coming to God the Father and going, um, God, pause for effect. You know that, Messiah that you gave us, that Son of God. You haven't got another one up there, do you? We kind of gone and lost Him, you know? And it's like, it's like, so you don't have another one? All right, we'll find Him. We got this, Lord. We're on this. We'll find, we'll find the Son of God. We will find Him. It's all good. And they did find Him. But this was one of many moments. This is one of many moments where they would have sat there scratching their heads and going, God, how do we raise the Son of God? How do we do this? But it started all with the first step that day when Joseph woke up and said, I'm going to marry Mary and everything that comes with it. How many know Mary had already said yes because she was pregnant? She had already committed to the journey. She had already said yes, come what may. She was prepared to face the fact that Joseph could have divorced her. She was prepared to face the fact that anything could have happened. But praise God that both Mary said yes and Joseph said yes and they said yes to God together. They committed to the plan of God together and they started a journey as a married couple into the unknown. They embraced Jesus. They embraced Jesus. See, in this season right now, I wanna encourage us. We need to embrace Jesus. We need to embrace who He is. He is the Prince of Peace. He has the hope that we need, the life that we need, the love that we need. It's all found in Him because He is the hope of the world. It is joy to the world because the Saviour is born. It's joy to the world because of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for all of humanity. It is a yes and an amen from us because of the promise that Christ brings. And it is an embracing daily in our lives to say, Lord, it's yes to You. It's yes to what you wanna do. How many know as the musicians and singers come, how many know for, for, for Mary and Joseph, for Mary's life, Jesus began to show. I mean, it's the funny thing about when a, a lady is pregnant. How many know after a period of time, four or five months, that baby's gonna begin to show. It's gonna show. Brooklyn is coming up right now. She's got a little baby growing in her womb. It begins to show in our lives. And it's meant to. It's a beautiful thing. And that's the same thing that happens in all of our lives. When Jesus is in us, He should show from our lives. He should show from our lives. He should be the thing that's radiating from our lives, that's being shown to the world around us, no matter what is going on, no matter what season we are in, is that Jesus is showing from our lives. And this was what was happening for Mary. Jesus began to show in her life. There was no hiding a come what may, I will show Jesus to the world around me. And this is the message to you and I right now, that we have the hope of life living inside of us through the Holy Spirit, that we can carry and live and abide through his love, His hope, His life, and show that to the world around us right now. You and I, we can show Jesus. We can show Him to the world around us. We have a great opportunity day in and day out in our lives. When we go to work every day, how can you show Jesus? How can you show Jesus? How can you show that He's living in me? His life, His hope is inside of me every single day. How can we make decisions to show Christ to our, our world around us? with our neighbours that live around us. We have opportunities in this season. How can we show Jesus? How can we show Jesus to those that live around us, to our neighbours? They're, they're there for a reason. See, right now, you and I have people that are in our world. There's some people that are keep calling us and wanting to hang out, and wanting to do life with us. And that's happening for a reason because God wants you to show Christ to their world. None of these things are by chance. God is trying to orchestrate relationship. God is trying to orchestrate moments where we can show Jesus to the world around us that yes, is dealing with so many different things right now. 
And the world needs the revelation of who Jesus really is. The opportunities are there all the time. You know, on the back of our Dream Team shirts, I love it. Because sometimes you just get used to seeing it. Sometimes you do. You get used to seeing that statement on the back of the Dream Team shirt that says, be the good in the world. You see it, but you, how many know, when you see it all the time, you just kind of, you don't read it anymore. But I wanna remind us again, when we see that, we're called to be the good in the world. We are called every single day to show Jesus to the world around us. What are those acts of generosity that we can bring even this week that's coming? What are those moments where we can sit and take some of our time and some of our energy and sow that into somebody else's life? What are the moments where we can sit and pray for someone that needs it? What are the moments where we can be the answer in a moment that needs it? See, God isn't calling us to be every answer to every problem and every need, but He is calling us to be an answer in the moments that we're called to bring it that the Holy Spirit wants to bring it through our lives in those moments. And we've got to be switched on to God. We've got to be switched on to the Holy Spirit in this season, at work, when you're at the gym, at the cabin, wherever you are, doesn't matter, when you're with your neighbours, around other people's lives, friends and family, what are those moments where we can show Jesus to the world around us? See, Jesus began to show in Mary and for Joseph as well. And they embraced Jesus. They embrace the moment. And friend, you and I, we can embrace the moments in our lives every day, every single day. And sometimes people aren't ready. Sometimes even in certain seasons, people aren't ready for the kindness that we can show. Sometimes they're not ready for the conversations. I know my neighbour that lives beside me has gone through a lot this year. And he He's been through so much in his life and, 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 uh, and he's gone in and out of moments of, of sadness and moments of things that have happened. But you know, every time I've seen him in the moments that have been there, I've tried to reach to him. And, and, and there's been moments at times where I've said, hey man, I'm here. If you need anything, if you need any help or you wanna talk or you wanna chat, I'm here, I'm here for you. And he was just, hey, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, there's been times when I've been able to show just a little bit, it's small seeds because he's kind of an Aussie man. So he's kind of like, he doesn't want to really talk about God. He doesn't want to talk about those things. But hey, when the, when the moments are theirs, I've just popped it in there. Just to let him know, hey, God's got a plan for your life. He loves you, cares about you. Just little seeds, little moments. And see, you and I, we've got people around us everywhere that need those seeds, that need those moments so easy in seasons of our lives to get caught up and what does my family need? What do I need in this moment? I wanna tell you when we seek first the Kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. That means, hey, if you put me first, I'll take care of your family. I'll look after your needs. I'll take care of you. I'll get you through. Whatever, whatever is happening in our world, whatever's going on in our world, God's here. He is the peace. He is the life. He is the answers. But hey, God is saying, hey, how can we show His life, His love, His hope in a world that needs it right now? We have the revelation of Jesus and people need it from our lives. Let's be the answer. Let's be an answer whenever we have the opportunity to show and to share Jesus. Let Him show from our lives. Let Him show. In the small things and in the large things, it all matters. And church, I wanna encourage us, we do have an opportunity next Sunday. We have an opportunity where we can invite friends and family. We can, we can let people know. Because I know our team have been working and preparing and planning so much to be able to put on the best experience to show the Gospel of Jesus Christ in this next Sunday. And what an opportunity. We've got family and people that have not even been in church before next Sunday. And praise God, we get to show Jesus and the Gospel message of who He is. I love that we get to do this. I love that we have an opportunity and I wanna encourage us today. Hey, is this someone that we can invite? Is this someone that we know in our world that we can let know about this? Because this may be the moment that they may say, man, from that moment or maybe in the weeks that follow, they may say yes to Jesus themselves. This could be that moment. Hey, I'm looking forward to all the great things that God is going to do. And I wanna encourage us now, I know that Christmas time, I know that there can be some family gatherings at times that can kind of create a lot of tension and create a lot of emotions in people's lives. 
Let's take those moments. Let's take those moments to say, you know what, Jesus, no matter what, I'm gonna show you to my family. I'm gonna show you to that, that uncle. I'm gonna show you to that sister, that brother. I'm gonna show you to those people in my life. I'm gonna be an answer in that moment. And maybe they don't wanna hear the Gospel. Maybe they do, I don't know. But hey, what can we do to sow those seeds in those moments? Don't be afraid of those moments. See them as an opportunity. How do we show Jesus? How do we share Him in our world today? Because right now, our world needs the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is the hope of the world, amen. Hey, let's all close our eyes this morning. I just wanna ask if there is anyone here today that maybe doesn't know Jesus for yourself. And uh, as I shared today about Joseph, Joseph had to make a decision in his life. Would he accept and embrace Jesus for himself? Would he allow this Jesus to come through his family to be the Saviour of the world? And we thank God today that Joseph and Mary said yes. They said yes to Jesus. They embraced Jesus in their lives. As Jesus grew up and He did die for the sins of all humanity. He laid His life down at the cross and He rose again three days later from death. And He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And He has saved the people from their sins. And every single person from that moment into the future, He has, he has given the opportunity through Jesus Christ, through what He has done, where we can know God, where we can know His life and know His love and have relationship with God for ourselves. See, I know there's many people here that maybe you've been doing life on your own. Maybe you've not known God. Maybe you're not even sure if God is real or God even exists. You're just checking God out today. You're checking this whole church deal out today. I wanna give you, uh, let you know today that we're, most of us in this place, we know God, we believe in God and we know that He is very, very real and He loves you today. He's got a plan, a purpose, a future and hope for your life. And life is so much better when it's done with God than without Him. And today we wanna give that opportunity to anyone here all on, online today, if you wanna know Jesus for yourself. And if you're here today, as all eyes are closed, I want you to lift your hand right now. Just raise up your hand to say, I want Jesus in my life. I wanna say yes to Jesus. Thank you, I see that hand, that's wonderful. Thank you, I see that hand. I need Jesus today. Are there others today that want to say yes to Jesus today? Just raise your hand. Say yes to Jesus, if that's you. If that's you today. Maybe there's people here that want to make a recommitment to Jesus. Maybe you've stepped back from God. You've really walked away or, or pulled back from Jesus in your life and you want to recommit your life to Jesus. If that's you today. Just lift your hand. Just say yes to Jesus today, if that's you. That's you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you're online today on the online platform, you can press raise my hand on there or click on the link that's coming up as well. Our team would love to help you there as well. But we're gonna pray this prayer together for the person that raised their hand and for the others online today. And I'd love if we can repeat this prayer after me today. Lord Jesus, I ask You to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Jesus, thank You for dying on the cross, raising from the dead for me. Jesus, I thank You that You are my Saviour and my Lord from this day forward. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Awesome, let's give Jesus a clap and just honour all those people that said yes to Jesus today online. That person that said yes to Jesus today, that is amazing, wonderful. Well. For that person today that said yes to Jesus, for anyone else online, Pastor Johanna has got some next steps and some things and resources we'd love to get to you today to help you on the journey of knowing Jesus. But church, what we'd love to do right now is if we can stand to our feet, we're gonna sing through this song again and worship Him for a few moments today. Let's sing.
Lord, I just thank You today in this moment. I pray that, Lord, You would show through our lives in an incredible way over this Christmas season. Jesus, I pray that You would show in our families, You would show in our, in our church, You'll show in our businesses, You'll show, Lord, in our community. Lord God, wherever we are in our neighbourhoods, Lord, wherever we are, we will show and there will be the revelation of who Jesus is. And God, we pray for this today. We pray that You are the hope of the world and God, You would use us as Your vessels, God, to show Jesus to the world around us today. Help us to see and recognise the moments. Help us to see and recognise the opportunities that are there to help somebody else in our life take another step closer to Jesus. I thank You for that today. God, I thank You for the, the opportunities to be and answer. Lord, I thank You that You're speaking to hearts right now. You're speaking to hearts and minds where there's opportunities, Lord, even this week to be an answer to somebody around us, to show the hope of the world, Jesus, to those around us. And I thank You for that today. Help us to be an answer to the world around us today in Jesus' Name. Lord, I lift up all of our church right now. Lord, I just pray blessing. Lord, go over every marriage, over every family, over every life in this Christmas season. Lord, I just, I just see Your covering and Your hand over the church right now, the sovereign hand of God. You know, church right now, I, I see such a sovereignty of the hand of God over the church. I was praying this morning and I, as I was praying, I just saw the, this massive hand of God that was over each and every one of our lives as a church. And I want you to see that today. I want you to be encouraged in that today. That God is, that is God's hand, that is God's covering, that is God's blessing over each and every one of our lives. And I, as I saw this hand, I saw the, the Spirit of God pouring out grace, pouring out life, pouring out blessing, pouring out promise over each and every one of our lives. And I, I would love for you to receive that and see that today. So as a family today, as people today, I want you to receive the blessing today in the Spirit. Lord, I bless every life. Lord, I bless every family today. I bless every person over this Christmas season. I release Your blessing. I release Your grace today. I release Your anointing today over each and every person. And I pray we receive that today in the Spirit. Lord, breakthrough in finances. Lord, breakthrough in physical healing and miracles. Lord, breakthrough in relationships over people's lives. Lord, we release Your grace. Release Your power today in the Name of Jesus Christ. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Thank You, Lord, thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I see there's some families here. There's some worries and concerns in your mind about a whole lot of different things and, and many are to do finances, provision. There's some to do with just family, just family circumstances. And I really see the peace of God right now just flooding over your lives. He is the hope of the world. He is the hope of the world. He is with you. He's around you. He surrounds your lives. And right now, I just if that's you, I want you to receive that, that assurance that He is your Lord and He is your King. He's with you. He's won the victory at the cross. The battle is the Lord's, it's already won. So whatever your needs are right now, whatever they have been, or whatever you're concerned about right now, He is the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's with you today. And right now I release that revelation. Revelation over every person and every family that needs that right now in this season. In the Name of Jesus Christ, just rest on us, Lord. Rest on every life, Jesus. Thank You for that today. In Jesus' Name, in Jesus' Name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Let's just sing through that again. Yours is the Kingdom, just soften. Yours is the Kingdom, the power, the glory. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. 
Lord, we lift up Your Name right now. We honour You, we praise You in this place. Yours is the Kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever.